there are many ways to personalize visual. Let's take a look at a few. Personalization means adjusting visual to your particular needs, either by business requirement or by industry or by role, and tailor it for an individual fit. Let's start by looking at the splash screens or home screens. Each user role can design their home screen to their liking. Here's how Paul likes to interface with visual, with shortcuts to his favorite things, even things that are outside of visual. I, on the other hand, look at things quite differently. Maybe if my focus was purchasing or planning, I might choose to have shortcuts to just those screens that I go to very often. Reduce the time spent finding actions and frequent reports by adding them to your home screen. Dashboards. Use visuals built in dashboards to bring relevant information to your attention. Each user will have their own analytics, those things that they care to be watching. You can use the many analytics that we've provided with the system or create your, uh, some custom analytics to put on your dashboard. Bring actionable information right in your face, right there at your fingertips. Here I'm seeing tasks that are waiting for me. Other areas that I'm watching, oh, I like this trend where our actual costs have started to come down. There for a little while, they were over our estimated costs. Now our estimated costs are higher than actual. So I may wanna drill in, see what's going on there. Um, this is not just pretty pictures. I can drill in and get as much information as I need to, uh, to do my job to make sure I'm watching those things I should be. Let's look down here at bookings. Maybe um, instead of by month, I want to change and look at this differently now. I'll just adjust this. We'll look at it by quarter. Uh, maybe I wanna look at a particular product code, sales and bookings for that product code, or for a particular sales rep and how they've been performing so I can adjust and filter and sort uh, the information that are on those dashboards and then drill in and get as much information as I need. Here we've got details of those bookings and with columns and rows when you see that in visual know that you can change the this is another way to personalize you can change the order things are in um, and and more and we'll continue to talk about that. But here I am in bookings and in a dashboard I may want to oh, we'll sort by amount ordered and maybe one of these larger orders catches my eye and I want to drill into that particular order. Notice that I also have contextual analytics that are configurable. This is a customer view panel, we call it. There are other analytics that I can bring forward around this customer order. You'll find these contextual analytics throughout Visual. They are configurable, they are drillable, I can drill into additional details, continue to drill now into these customer or other customer orders for this customer if I need to. Let's talk about screen design while we're here, another way to personalize. Remember what I said about columns and rows. I can change the sequence of things. I can determine what is showing and what is not with a simple click of the box. I may want to change the titles of what I call something. We'll change part ID here to item ID and save that. You'll see that same functionality in our advanced searches as well, which are columns. So if there was a field that I needed to use for filtering or sorting that wasn't showing on the default um, search there, just add it, add in additional information if you need to. Maybe I want a couple of these fields to show in there. Maybe there's something I don't care to have showing. Just add and remove, change titles if you need to, save those to add to your add to your filter, be able to filter down to the, just to the information you're looking for um, very quickly. So personalization, that's some ad hoc personalization um, that I talked about. Simple uh, personalization of screens that that you can do with columns. You can also add. Um, there's many user defined fields that can be added. I can add to these tabs. Uh, and more. However, there is also some advanced screen design. I'll show you a little bit of that. Let's, um, let's start by looking at a particular screen. I'll show you another screen. We'll use part maintenance. That's where I set up parts 
and where I uh, maintain information around those parts. So let's take a look at that, this particular part. And uh, let's, let's look at what's on the screen and we'll go make some changes. So for example, I've got a part number here with a white background, black lettering. Maybe we wanna change that. Maybe there are fields we want to take off, add on, move around. That's all done with our advanced tool, uh, our advanced window design tool. Before I go there, I do want to point out that you can globally change titles. So if you never call things parts, you call them SKUs, you call, you call customers clients, you can make those changes globally across all screens. But let's look at that advanced screen designer for part maintenance. Now I can design any of the forms. But here we're looking at the part maintenance form. It should look a little familiar, uh, like the thing we just, we're just looking at the screen. Uh, let's say, see, I said I wanted to change maybe the background of this field. So I highlighted that field. We'll go find background. There's background. What color do I want that to be? I'll just make it slightly different. We'll make that yellow. Uh, the text color is currently black. Let's make it different and um, now let's also look at some of these other things that I can easily do. Is this a field I can see? Well, yes, I want to see that. I don't want to turn that to no. Um, I can see if I want to have a bolder border around something. And do I want to offer a tool tip when I hover over that field and more? Let's do a couple other things. Um, for instance, let's just put palette and um, and right here next to case. So move things around, disappear them off the screen, make them not visible. Hey, I want that a little different. And if I, I can snap that to a grid, that's another th uh, thing that I can turn on so that I don't have to keep playing with that. But that's probably enough screen design for us. We'll just save those changes. Now let's go back and take a look at part maintenance. Sure enough, we've got a yellow field. If I type into that or search for a part, it's blue. My palette quantity has moved over. So make the changes you need to using personalize using screen design. With workflow, you can automate business processes without programming. You define your procedures and policies and processes and rules. You define those to visual and visual watches for the conditions of those activities to happen to trigger actions. So visual sits there like a little watchdog workflow does, uh, waiting for those actions to happen. Then it jumps into action and takes the actions you've specified. Those could be authorizations or tasks or sign-offs or pop-ups or automatic emails uh, being fired off. And there's more that workflow can do. Of course, the reason you do this is for consistency and compliance and to make sure that those rules and policies and procedures are, are followed. Let's take a look at a very simple workflow. It's a very simple workflow. This is the design tool. So you use a tool that is um, like a flow charting tool to design what visual is watching for, in this case, a customer order over $10,000. And when that happens, it leaps into action and takes the actions that you've specified. Again, this is a very simple workflow. Workflows uh, can, you know, can get complicated as you can, as you can imagine, but use the same tool to, uh, to define those workflows, define what actions are to be taken and under what circumstances. Lastly, let's look at macros. Now, macros, a macro is a small script-based program that's usually developed by users. It's there to meet a specific need and automate and control different processes. Macros can be initiated at many times when you add a new record or when you come in to add a new record, when you're saving a new record, even after that record, maybe I fire off some notifications after a particular type of record has been saved or if I'm deleting, or even manually. Um, let's look at a very simple, well, a simple example would be, maybe when I create a new part number, you can drive the entry of certain fields 
like buyer code, based on the entry in another field, like commodity code. So when I say the commodity is steel, then the buyer is automatically a particular buyer. Let's look at a really simple macro. First, let's look at normal behavior, and then we'll change that behavior. Let's use the uh, purchasing entry screen for this macro. So here's the purchase order entry screen. Um, under normal circumstances, the PO number will be assigned based on some rules that you've placed, you know, sequential numbers, maybe a prefix or a suffix. Um, so without, without a macro, let's see what happens here. If I create a, um, a PO to a particular vendor, and I won't bother adding any parts, just watch what happens to the order number. So here's the order number that was, um, that was assigned without a macro. Well, let's say we want that order number to be determined with other factors. So let's create a macro to drive that order number to be something else. I'll delete this um, purchase order and we'll, we'll start from scratch. Here's a macro that we want to fire on new. In other words, as whenever I create a new purchase order in this case. Here's what that macro is going to do. That's a description that's optional. And then let's, so this macro is going to change the order ID, make the order ID or assign the order ID on a new order to be equal to today's date. Um, here's, here's the script. N means now. So in this macro, Whenever I start a new order, the order ID will be equal to the year, which is now, and the month that is now, the day that is now, the hour and minutes all that are now. Uh, who knows when you'll be watching this video. So right now it is this date, this time. Uh, so let's go, let's go watch this in action. So here we are, I'll save that macro. We'll close this. And now I'm just going to start a new order. There we go. 2021, 1118, and, um, and as you can see, the, the dates. So macros are used. They're a small script, as you can see. They are there to meet a very specific need to help automate and control those processes. So over the last few minutes, we've looked at a few ways to personalize visual. There are more. All of the, um, the things that I talked about, for example, screen design, workflow, macros, even though we gave specific examples, they can be used throughout the system. Dashboards can report on any information within visual, either by those pre-configured analytics or create your own analytics. And as we saw, home screens or splash screens, as we, we call them, can, can be personalized. There are many other ways to personalize visual. But we know that to perform at their best, your employees need to be able to immediately access the information that's relevant to them. Personalize visual for their specific roles and tasks to, to achieve optimal efficiency and performance.